the previous videos, I talked about if JavaScript is good enough to get a job and I've explained some of the differences, types of jobs that you can get when you know JavaScript, such as front-end developers, front-end engineers, and full-stack developer. In today's video, we are going to continue on this topic. If you haven't checked out the previous video, I will highly encourage you to do that. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about jobs like back-end developers and freelancers. And I wanted to mainly focusing on if you know JavaScript, what are some of the options if you want to become a backend developer and maybe a freelancer? Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May and I am a full-time software engineer in New York City. So in this channel, you are going to learn so much about learning how to code, web development, and everything related to tech. If you are interested in this type of topics, maybe consider subscribing. Let's jump into the topic. So the first developer that I want to talk about is backend developer. And backend developer works only on the server-side code, mainly. So back in the days when JavaScript was only a browser-run program, language but nowadays JavaScript has involved so so much it has become one of the top server-side programming languages however JavaScript still have a long way to go I would say there's still a lot of different applications that are not built with JavaScript it's not common to find a back-end software developer who only knows about JavaScript but it is possible to find rules that is focusing on Node.js, um, which is the server side of JavaScript. It's not a surprise that if you want to find a job as a backend developer, you will need skills just like any other backend developers needs. The first skills is the ability to design and build APIs. The second ability is the deploy services with AWS or similar cloud infrastructures. The third thing is strong database knowledge. So in terms of like strong database knowledge, I would say if you know both, you know, Node.js. For the database knowledge, I would say that NoSQL and SQL are both equally important. But for the sake of, you know, just getting the database knowledge under your belt, I would say probably worth learning more about SQL, which stands for Structure Query Language. I would say that Node.js isn't suitable for every type of applications. So you will need to look for companies that make heavy use of it. If you definitely do not like front-end work, it is possible to find a job with only JavaScript. It's not impossible, but it's an unusual path. You will likely have a easier time finding a rule if you learn different server-side languages like Python or Go, aka Golang, as well as JavaScript. So it's not impossible. So don't worry about that because my company that I work with currently runs servers with Node and TypeScript. So it is hopeful to find a job as a backend developer who needs to know JavaScript, but I think it will help you to stand out if you know other backend programming languages as well. Okay, so you might wonder, Vicky, what if I don't want to work for anyone else? I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to be a freelancer. I want to travel the world, picking up projects from time to time. Is that possible if you know JavaScript? And I would say it is possible to go freelancing as any type of JavaScript developer. That includes, you know, front-end, back-end, or full stack. In order to go freelancing though, not only you need to know how to program, which is important, and at least you need to know how to build the application, the entire application, and having that flexibility of jumping into many different kinds of projects and use different tech stacks or even any conventions 
for you to take over any client projects. And even more than just that, you would need to know business skills and communication skills because you are your own boss. So it's not just programming, but it's all about like how you would run your brand and run your business, right? So you'll probably be working directly with the clients and that includes dealing with answering their concerns, figuring out, you know, what they need as well as planning the product roadmap. And sometimes you might also need to, you know, come up with a design with them if they don't have a designer or even supporting and maintaining the product afterwards. So that could also be part of your package deal where you are negotiating with the client and charge them, you know, XYZ amount of money for maintaining their services that you're going to provide in the future for that software that you built. But what I'm trying to say, it is a business that you're running if you decided to go down into the freelancing route. And other point that I want to talk about is unless if you're freelancing for the modern tech companies. So think of, you know, like the newest startups or anything that any companies that actually uses the modern tech stacks. But a lot of times you would definitely run into older technologies like jQuery. What? And maybe like even older versions of HTML and CSS. If you want to freelance and offer more than just front end services, a common request for a back end work that is often for WordPress sites or sometimes it would need some, you know, updates on WordPress related sites. And that means you would probably need to pick up you know, the knowledge of Node.js and also as well as PHP. Other than all those things that I talked about previously, I also think it's worth looking into React Native because it's a framework that uses JavaScript to build mobile apps. And you probably have talked to a bunch of your friends. Everyone has a app idea, a mobile app idea. So definitely there's a lot of markets out there for people who are looking for a quick mobile app developer. I would say that if you plan to go freelancing, it's worth looking into learning how to build mobile app with React Native. You can definitely pick up more freelancing gigs that way because you will be able to build not only the web apps, but as well as mobile apps. If you have not checked out, you know, the first part of the video, I would highly recommend you to check out the first part of the video because it talks more about front end and full stack developer who uses JavaScript. And if you think that you wanted to explore more options, such as more programming languages, um, I would definitely highly recommend you to check out the other videos that I make that are Python related or even talk about DevOps piece.